This is a really exciting role for us. Um, it, it's, I think, a, a large step forward in progressing the school. I, I keep saying uh, we have to honour our history and our past, but we have to be forward-looking about what our future is. And this role will be integral in building the future of Scots PGC and taking us forward and really setting the foundation for our next 100 years after celebrating the previous 100. At the next dinner for prospectors, I failed to put out the wheel. I didn't give them this really a better way of without a name tag. Council is uh, linked with the college, so we support the executive team and the principal. Foundation sits to the side. So the foundation is the uh, fundraising arm of the college. So uh, we have donations that have been given to us from uh, benefactors, past students. We run the scholarship program, um, but it's really the vehicle that raises money. It's a, it's a standalone entity. Um, it is only for the purpose of the college, but it is not managed by the college, it is managed by a standalone uh, team or board. They're going to have to work really hard and they have to think a bit laterally. It's not going to be uh, a role from one of the tier one GPS schools where they just wander around and uh, all of a sudden they can achieve their goals. They're going to have to work hard for this one, but the successful person, they'll want to do it there'll be some connection or they'll develop some connection and only then will they do a decent job. But there's a big role here. The key uh, function of that role is relationships, um, both externally forming relationships, whether it's with industry and organisations or whether it's with past students, potential benefactors, but equally important is the relationships that are formed and maintained within the organisation. So whilst they're outward looking in a lot of their relationships, uh, they're also part of a, a very strong team environment here and, and contributing to that whole team ethic is important in the selection process here. Why do you think it was so important to give back to the school um, in honour of your mum? Well, I think my mum, she, gave, she was very involved in schools um, in the 50s, 60s, in the early 70s, she was on the school council for well, most of the 50s, well, pretty well all the 50s. And we moved out west, <clears throat> she moved out west for a few years and came back on the school council again from you know, mid 60s to early 70s. And also, she was secretary and president of the P you know, PGC Albiol Association. <clears throat> so, she, you know, for a lot of years, she was very involved with PGC. And, mm. Um, and, and she was a student, her brothers were students at Scott's, her, four of her children went to Scott's PGC. Um, she a lot of, we, and we went, <laughs> both yes, were there, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, yeah, yeah, a lot of, you know, relatives by marriage, you know, mm. went there also. And, yeah. You know, so, yeah, we've had a, quite a long involvement with them. With the school. With the school. Is it that connection that obviously your, your, your family has to the school? And, and, um, I mean, what, what was the catalyst in terms of creating this award? Mm. I think we just realised 
you know, it was, school was a bit of a pretty tough period there, um, you know, a few years ago with, with droughts and reduced numbers. And we went for the Anzac Day Parade <clears throat> and, and a couple of other things. And we just realised, you know, the school really had something, you know, we were really impressed by the school. Mm. We thought maybe we could contribute and, you know, help, you know, help some students or, you know, through that tough time. Give something back, I guess, because we both felt we had a very good education at, at Scots and PGC separately in those days. And and it kind of set us up, we feel, for, you know, going on for careers that we've enjoyed and, you know, well, David particularly has done well at. So we thought it would be good to be able to give something back. Because that, that is a renovation of this place in 1982. So we want to capture that again. Absolutely. And yeah. bring it back to what it was like when it was originally built. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So that all would have been taken off in 82 and the configuration they had as you come through here, they were quite uh, unique, I don't know about unique, but we had four and six configuration of kids, so boys in, in this little space. Um, it's a bit messy now, but so you had groups of groups of six, four or six, and then you had single ones out in the, on the on the new wing. Because that's the here's the old door, the old wall of the original original building. Yeah. In '82, this wing was put on, and you got little alcoves. So you got these little alcoves that were all. This is the first time you got some privacy as a boarder, which was pretty cool, but you didn't have these things on, and these actually moved, so you could actually move them around, which was pretty fun because two boys could lift this up and turn them around, so, yeah, you come to get back in your bed and all of a sudden your cupboard's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone got their own space along the side, and I lived around here. So you're considered, I'm not quite sure, my memory says important, but you know, maybe not, but this is my space, and this one. So I had the original building as a bed head, a bit of rising down, but hey, that's why we need to fix it up. So underneath all of these, this is all off the false floor, and the door of the original homestead, I suppose it is, I have to be correct on that goes through uh, that, that, that set of cupboards. This was all put in in 82. Yeah, there you go, it's there you go. fascinating looking at it, what would have been cutting edge at the time and you know what, what appears not to be that far into the future is suddenly um, out of date and antiquated. Um, certainly couldn't do that nowadays oh. and, and, and house borders in, in accommodation like this. And um, it is amazing when you look at the accommodation we have got for our borders yeah. now, which is just light years yeah. ahead, of, on, ahead of this, but this was good for the 80s, you know, this was the 80s, you're a product of your time, aren't you? So um, You are, and I've, I find it fascinating listening to you speak about this was your this was your bed, this was your cubicle, this was your room. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah. how many other people think the same way, and we certainly see that on our past students' days oh. when we tour them through the building, and it's all about, that was my bed, or that was my bed, or do you remember yeah. when that happened here and, and there? So, you know, again, respecting our history and the number of people who have been through here is incredibly important to us but equally as important is we've got this wonderful space oh let's let's use it, it for our future so much and boarding school is uh boarding school is just formulates who you are yeah it really does yeah. it's a pretty tough pretty cool five years or so of your life that um, it does change it there's no question about that it makes you a different person but this building if we can strip out the old boarding evidence and turn it into something that represents who Scots is now for the next hundred years, yeah, we'll have achieved something. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's yeah. our heart and soul and we need to respect it as such. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, Scots PGC has such a unique culture. Um, there's a strength in the sense of belonging. Um, there's a sense, a really strong sense of community. Um, so having the right person who um, identifies with the culture, um, walking around with Martin 
and listening to Martin speak to, uh, to his school fundamentally resonates with me, even though I didn't attend here and I've been here for three years, not part of the organisation for the past 100, I still feel the same way. And when I speak to people who are engaged with our school, um, whether it be as an employee or as one of our extended community members, that sense of belonging, that sense of belonging to something larger than themselves and that culture of being genuine and real um, is something that is really unique here and I think we need to be are very protective of that, but we also need to be able to tell the story of that more effectively than we have.